Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the IAFM podcast. We're here today with Sabrina Marsalisi, who is from the Brand Foundation. Uh, so welcome, Sabrina. Thank you so much for having me. Love it. I love it. Um, and thanks so much for reaching out. I feel like this was one of those, you know, nice, like genuine, natural connections that happened. And um, I love that you reached out. I love that we started having a conversation on the back end about the brand foundation and everything it has to offer. And it just felt like such a natural fit and something that our audience would really, really enjoy learning more about. Um, anything with the arts usually is just something of such high interest. And I just love what you're doing and I love your space. Um, so would you mind just telling us first, before we get into all the nitty gritty, um, tell, tell us about yourself. How did you end up working at the Brand Foundation? Have you always had um, a background in the arts itself? Like how has your career kind of flowed and brought you to this space? Um, so uh, I did have a background in the arts. I'm not an artist, very, very far from it. I can't <laughs> even do uh, a sketch or a stick <laughs> figure properly. Um, and my passion really is for art itself and understanding it. Um, and just the whole idea about art and what it can do for, you know, people, society. Um, but as a kid, my mother was uh, an artist um, growing up in the Bronx. I was constantly dragged to the Met and uh, yeah. Mama, Whitney. So all these different, um, you know, institutions and I think some of the greatest in the country. And um, that's kind of what kick-started my interest. Um, I then lived in California, so we were going to the Getty and LACMA. So I was always surrounded around art, um, and my mom would often um, force me to take art classes, and that just didn't work out. Um, and I knew <laughs> that when I um, was getting ready for college that I wanted to study art history. Um, that was <laughs> Is that a shock to your family? Like what's happening? It was more of a disappointment. Like, <laughs> what are you going to do with that? What are you going to do with an art history degree? And I said, I'm going to work in a museum. Um, and I went to um, community college for the first two years um, yeah. to New York. I knew that I wanted to go to school uh, in New York City. Um, I got accepted. My dad was like, hold on. What do you do with everybody else's this new thing, this new phenomenon of you know, a, a two year school, community college. And then I said, okay, um, I ended up getting accepted into purchase and finished my, um, my bachelor's degree there. Uh, with, Beautiful. Yeah, with, so, um, you know, pretty, pretty local in the area. Um, it's a great art school. I went there. Fabulous art school. Yeah. yeah. I remember looking at purchase too. Yeah. I mean, it's one of the bleakest campuses. <laughs> It's got I know. <laughs> modern, like the most modern, like architecture, but it was a great school. Yeah. Um, I got um, my bachelor's in uh, arts management with a minor in art history, and then I decided mm -hmm. to go back there for um, my master's with a degree in contemporary and modern uh, art history. Awesome. Yeah. In the process of doing that, I landed an internship here at the foundation while I was still an undergrad, and. Um, I started off, um, you know, doing an exhibition with them, and then I asked if I could stay, and then I ended up um, being hired <laughs> as soon as I graduated from grad school. So I interned with them for about like, so. yeah three years. They always hire from within. We're a very, very, very small team. We yeah. are, um, you know, there's a director, the associate director, myself, and then uh, an assistant to the director. So between two locations and two separate states. Major cities. <laughs> There's four of us running both uh, both locations. So um, that is wild. Yeah. And outside, of, so like that's like leadership. On site, do you have other people or is it literally you guys kind of like bouncing around being the faces of the foundation? Yeah, at both no. um, like we have um, two people who work off site that, um, you know, the preparator, uh, he also acts as a courier when we're lending to different, you know, different stations. Um, and then his wife deals with a little shipping and handling. And, um, you know, when we're conducting install and deinstall, she's the head person here. Um, but that's, you know, kind of a different 
It is. It's like a different yeah. arm of the yeah. extension. Yeah. Um, oh, and wow. then we have a building manager that's, you know, in New York City taking care of everything, permits, you know, just yeah. all the boring There's stuff. So much involved. <laughs> That's yeah, and then it's a lot of interns. We we depend on our interns, but you know we conduct all the programming. Mm -hmm. um, you know the the catalogs are done in house. Merchandise is designed in house, so it's just it's a lot. Wow, but, it is a lot. But how fascinating! Like just hearing you talk about it brings me back because I was an art major as well. Like I was an illustration major, and now my career is took me to like graphic design, which I thought I would never do. Um, I was so much more into like the fine arts, painting, drawing and all that stuff. And just hearing you talk about this brings me back to like how I feel every time I walk into a museum. It's like, it, it's invigorating and it's just so, it's an emotional process for me to like yeah. go into these, you know, um, which I'd love to get into like how, um, how are your locations different and unique. I mean, you have two different ones. Um, the New York one, I believe, did you say that was the original? No, so the Greenwich yeah. location. Oh, the Greenwich location is the original. Amazing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Connecticut people. Greenwich was the original <laughs> place. So tell uh -huh. us about that location. I feel like um, I reading on like on your website and just getting to, you know, um, a little bit more exposure because guys, to me, Brand Foundation was news. I did not know you guys existed. Um, so every little bit that I've learned has been just from like researching you guys on your website, but as someone who is there and lives it and breeds it, I'd love to hear like wh what you're most proud of about the brand foundation. What does the brand foundation offer? Well, okay. So, um, the Greenwich, Connecticut location, um, the original, we opened in 2009. Mm -hmm. Um, and the whole basis behind like our, our mission is to mm -hmm. promote the education and appreciation of contemporary art and design and yeah. we do that through our biennial exhibitions um so how we decide who we're going to exhibit is based on mr peter brandt's collection he's a contemporary art collector um you know started collecting when he was 19. Yeah. um yeah, it, it, he was very fortunate. He had uh, Leo Castelli, who famed art dealer, um, giving him advice. So, and he said, oh. you don't collect abstract expressionism. These artists are being canonized in art history. It's gonna cost a lot of money. Start looking at new and emerging artists. And uh, luckily that was like Warhol and Klaus Oldenburg. And, right. Yeah, so one of his first works was a soup can. Um, by Warhol and yeah and from that moment on it was just you know Carl Andre, um, Donald Judd, so all these artists who weren't you know weren't looked at as they are today you know they were emerging during that time so um, yeah so that's really the basis of our collection it's contemporary modern um, and the great thing about us is that we're free <laughs> um, which most art institutions um, are not. Um, and so, you know, we have these exhibitions, we are very big on, you know, uh, having like, having our guests have an intimate experience with the artwork. Um, so important. Yeah, because so important. there's nothing worse than seeing an exhibition and just, you know what I mean, like too crowded and people are taking pictures and it yeah. just becomes like too, there's too many distractions. It's like, you're not like, I mean, it's like that typical thing where you see like someone standing in front of a big painting and just standing there and staring at it. And it's kind of like, you know, I don't want to say cliche or whatever, but it truly is something that people like to immerse themselves in and yeah. really feel and take in. It's an emotional thing. Yeah. Um, I'll never forget, you know, going to the the Warhol uh, exhibition at the Whitney or the Michelangelo exhibition at the Met, I was like, get me out of here. There's just like too many people. Like, Sardines. It's cold. like you're on a tour bus, you know? It just doesn't yeah. feel personal. Yeah. And it's like, I'm getting close to this artwork and it's like, I'm in this person's picture. Now I can see that they're mad at me, but I'm like, I don't care. Like I'm here to experience <laughs> the artwork. I'm not here to yeah. take pictures of it. I mean, sure. But like, what are you going to do with that? Yeah. Um, so what we do is we have um, a guided tour 
um, every day during the week, Tuesday through Friday. So, you know, you join a tour um, and uh, you're probably with, you know, there's no more than 30 people on a tour. So it is like awesome. a very intimate, you have a docent that's guiding you through. And then if you don't want to do that, we have open house um, hours on Saturdays. Um, during the summer, we do it um, on Sundays when there's polo, because the polo, uh, Greenwich Polo Field is located right next to us. So, you know, and we really just try to foster a, an experience an experience that is intimate and educational, you know, like, yeah. and we do a ton of programming too for the spring and summer. It's like our busiest time of year. We don't charge for groups, for camps, school visits, nothing. We just like want them to come in, want them to learn, and we want to have a relationship with them basically. Wow. So tell me more about the, the summer program. So you mentioned camps. Yeah. Um, so literally I can sign up my two kids to go to camp with you guys for certain like certain class schedules like how does your how does all that work we don't host the camp we invite camps here for like their field trips for their school oh awesome um yeah and it's crazy because or not crazy it's just it's really nice to see you know we're doing a lot of contemporary artwork so sometimes you're seeing uh, a sculpture that's made out of garbage or seeing a sculpture that's made with 3D printing, um, you know, it's not uh, traditional art, a candle that burns. So therefore that artwork will not exist anymore after it burns down. So right. you have these kids coming in and, you know, having an idea of art and their idea of art is completely transformed after leaving our space because they're just awesome. like, Wait, what? And it's like, yeah. yeah, anything can be art as long as there is expression and meaning behind it, you know? Oh. Um, that's awesome. yeah. So, I mean, that's like a really big part. Like we, our main focus is on students. It's on the youth, um, you know, our internship program. Um, we, you know, take all of our interns to different institutions too, to try to expose them to as much contemporary art as possible. Um, so do you have to be of a certain age to become an intern or apply to be an intern with you? Uh, like when the high school kids come, we have a program yeah. with um, Greenwich High School uh, where, their last month of school there's like three or four and they intern with us they have to have 20 hours um oh, love it yeah you know we give them the option of staying and their main project is working towards giving um a, a, a tour you know because public speaking is something that you're going to need to do and in high school it's a little nerve-wracking and um it really builds their confidence and it's like a great thing to to watch you know i love that because it's like i there's something to be said about those kids as well, because I feel like, you know, they're there because they want to be there. Like, yeah. it's not about the paycheck. It's not about like they, they want to learn. And it's hard to find kids like that nowadays, you know, for whatever reason. I mean, even in our own businesses, like finding people who are truly in it because they, they want the exposure. They want to learn from you. They want, you know, the experience. They want to learn how to public speak, you know, like all these wonderful, they want to learn more about art. They want, you know, yeah. maybe they're, they have like an interest in it, whether it's art history or they're artists themselves. Like there is something in them that is invested almost in you and what you have to offer. And I think that's, that's it's such a wonderful thing um, to witness, I, you yeah. know? Um, and it's nice too, because they're working with a small team. So it's intimate. It's not like there's, you know, people that they've never even met before as they're walking through the building or like they um, have access to the source Yeah, you know, exactly. to you. It's wonderful. Yeah. And, uh, it's really great to, to see mo most of them, you know, they're only supposed to intern here for a month of high school kids. And yeah, uh, they usually end up staying because. I think that they have a lot of fun doing what they're doing. And it's just one great thing is if you're really interested in art, there's nothing better than working in an environment that you're surrounded yeah. by artwork. Do you do, you do anything? Um, so traditionally, again, artwork, sometimes we think like, oh, indoors, you know, a gallery and whatever. Do you guys expand out? Do you have like an outdoor area that maybe you do installations or anything like that that people can also experience? So, um, you know, I mentioned who we have on staff. We do not have a curator on staff. The artists curate their, their shows here. Mm -hmm. um, so you're not seeing someone else's point of view of the artist's work. You're seeing the actual 
artist um, idea of how the show is going to flow, what artworks they want to include. Yeah. Um, most of the time we're doing solo exhibitions, their surveys. Um, and sometimes when you have, um, when you give artists creative brain, yeah. uh, the space, they'll take advantage of it and they will, you know, it's almost like a kid in a candy shop for the first half of it. They're like, this is great. I want to do this. I want to do this. And then I think it becomes extremely overwhelming because, you know, you're thinking about a curator. Okay. They are an outside person that's, you know, organizing and coordinating the show, but when it's your own work, Oh yeah. I think it becomes, I think there's like a couple of stages of curating a show here for an artist where it's like, yeah, Yes. And it's like, oh my God. <laughs> you know? Right. But um, kind of self edit, not criticize yourself too much. Like, you know, if there's a, there's probably a lot. Yeah. There's a lot that happens. Big process. <laughs> um, yeah. But we, so um, we've had some pretty uh, crazy shows. Um, you know, it took about three years to renovate this building. It was a fruit storage barn originally. It was built in the 1900s. And, um, then it became like abandoned after the, the apple orchards were, I don't know, abandoned. It, there was a whole big apple orchard in the back um, of Conyers so Farm. And uh, then when Mr. Grant started Polo, the building became the Polo Club and then, you know, started the renovations for the Brandt Foundation. It took about three years. Yeah. Um, and uh, another thing about the building is it also has a very intimate feeling like there's furniture for you to sit on. It may be, you know, Jean Royer modern furniture, but you know, it, there is this like <laughs> one room that it has this very intimate domestic feeling, um, welcoming, you know, and then you kind of move through the space and yes, there is that white cube aesthetic, but there's also, um, you know, uh, exposed wood so you still have that farm feeling um one of the things that really caught my eye was the architecture yeah you know it felt like um a lot of open space which galleries usually have but natural lighting felt like it was coming through and that on its own i mean i feel like it adds to the um like I'd feel more relaxed yeah. being in a space that way instead of like in an enclosed gallery, you know, with just like, you know, like, like we would in, in a traditional gallery, not yeah. that it's a horrible experience, but it's certainly a different one. Yes. Um, right. And I, you know, just having those natural elements all around you, it almost, it, it helps you relax and then take in, you know, the exhibit a little bit differently. Totally. I mean, there's been times that we've gone to exhibitions and there's a lot to be seen and just with the lighting being off and like the air, it's just like, I gotta get out of here. Yeah. It's almost yeah. like you feel like you're like, I gotta get through this quicker because you yeah. feel like you might be in a little bit of a maze versus I'm just hanging out here for a bit. Then I, you know, walking out and I, you probably like go outside for a bit and then come back in and, you know, um, and especially since it, like you said, like it's a survey of one artist, um, so it, it's like you, you're taking a moment to just almost have a, um, a conversation with that artist, you know, yeah. and, and take it in at your own pace. Yes. Um, but, um, you know, back to what, um, back to kind of like the installations that, that we've yeah. done. Um, so yeah, we took three years to renovate this space. Our first show, remembering Henry's show, yeah. was year long. It had all works that were part of the collection, Coons, Urs Fisher, um, Andy Warhol, Basquiat, and then Urs Fisher was doing uh, an exhibition here, and we knew that he wanted to install his piece called You, which mm -hmm. is basically a 20-foot hole that is like dug into a floor, and we just had, you know, renovations, <laughs> and, you know, that, um, so that happened, and then we've had. Um... Wait, wait, time out. <laughs> Did you actually dig a hole in the new floor? Oh yeah, you can see it on our website. Urs Fisher, Oscar the Grouch. Yes. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna put that up here so people can see it. Yeah. Um, Amazing. And then we had um, another show, Rob Pruitt where we did a flea market. So we took there was some retail that was involved. Um, he feels that um, you know flea markets are very similar to, you know, how an art 
show is curated, you know, there's categorizations, there's okay. value. So he asked the Brandt family to donate items for a flea market. And that was something that we did all throughout the exhibition. I yeah. love it because like it truly gives artists like their voice, you know, and yeah. it's, it's so immersive. I love this. Yeah. Um, there was Urs Fisher again, which we had mm. in 2019. Um, I think there was like over 3000 handcrafted um, teardrops. They were made out of clay that were like individually hung at, at, and it was like um, a gradient. So it was very specific how the raindrops were hung. We also had his bread house, a house made out of bread and uh, his candles. So oh yeah. Have, um, you, have you ever had an artist like come back? Like has, has ever been, you know, First Fisher, yes. Yeah. So we did that the one? anniversary. Yeah. So that was, um, we did that for, yeah, our 10 year anniversary show. And it was just, you know, we had, like I said, a 3D printed sculpture. Actually, our sculpture out on our lawn is also by him. It's 3D printed. So it's just, we really have artists that are looking at you know, art in a very out of the box, unconventional way. And it just, it, it challenges us and it makes us think like, you know, and it's crazy too. Like kids were coming in, they were like, what? This is 3D printed, that's not art. And I was like, but you think about fashion, you know, <laughs> right. like they come up with a, a dress or an idea. It's not the, the designer that is so, you know, it's, and if you go back in time too, like everybody gets so upset that the artist hand is not in the art, but it's been going on for centuries. I mean, but you could say that about anything. Like you could say that about a, you know, red dot on a black canvas and you're like, that's it. You know, I could have done that, but you didn't. Exactly. That's <laughs> what you didn't. <laughs> right. It's just, it, it's, but that's the beauty about art. It's completely subjective. It's what you make of it. Sometimes you're going to like it. Sometimes you're not, but that's okay. That's the point. Yeah. So oh, it's okay. When people are like, oh my God, I hated this show. People are very um, vocal about how they feel. And I'm like, well, you know, the artist still succeeded because it doesn't matter what kind of feelings you're experiencing. If you're feeling something that, you know, a feeling that is extremely visceral, then the artist succeeded, whether it's anger, sadness, happiness. Right. They're not looking for a grade. They're not looking for right. an A plus on their exhibit. They're looking to have a conversation with you and move you. Um, yeah. So yeah. exactly. No matter where you stand, no matter if it's a positive or negative, like it's making you think it's making you feel. And I think you use that word challenge a lot. Like it's absolutely true. Challenge your audience. Yeah. Have that conversation. What's crazy though, is that we've been here since 2009 and people yeah have, you know, in Greenwich, you're like, I never knew what this was. You know, people who go to Polo think that like, we're like the horse stables and we're like, no, we're actually we're right there. an art <laughs> institution. I mean, and we have, you know, we do like free sketch nights. Um, we do yoga out on the lawn, which is nice. It's $10, you know, all of the money that we do raise goes to programming to cover costs for like the projects or if we pay for transportation for title one school. So it's just like, we're really here to be utilized and it's a huge service, obviously to the community and beyond. Yeah, it's just crazy that like more people don't, don't really know that we're here. And I mean, well, now they will. Know, right? <laughs> we're gonna After, yeah, we had, I mean, our Basquiat show, we were experiencing down in the city, like a thousand people a day. And it's yeah. just like, yeah, I guess nobody wants to, um, I don't know, sign up on the email, get another, last you know like god yeah you never know um but you know sometimes it's just education word of mouth and and yeah. you know it'll grow it'll i mean i can't see how you couldn't it's it, i mean we'll do whatever we can to get yeah. the word out about what you're I doing mean, when we were in the city we were it was i mean the expo i can't tell you it was mayhem for about two and a half months it mm -hmm. was just thousand people a day like that building in the city too you know it's also a very intimate building like I think yeah. our biggest floor can only uh occupy like 70 people so that's why we had wow. such, like such 
people were like freaking out. They're like, I can't get tickets. This is so elitist. It's like, no, we don't want to get shut down. <laughs> no, it's not elitist. Oh my God. <laughs> we thought that we were only like holding ticket for a certain, it was like, we would release like 500 extra tickets a day. We had lines like outside the building. And it was just like, listen, yeah. this building was also built in like 1920. Like the elevator is very small. <laughs> There's only a certain amount of people that can go up in it. And we're not the Whitney. We're not the Met. We're <laughs> in a pretty small space. Yeah. But- a little small space, but like with an incredible, I don't know what you would call it. I'm going to say roster. I don't know, you know, an, an incredible history of, of creators, of artists that, that you're helping, you know, have an exhibit for and put a, be a, a platform for them. So, I mean, I think naturally one of my, one thing that I, I immediately was thinking was how, like, and, and I, I asked this almost like just as a, you know, layman's whatever, but if I'm an artist out here watching this and I love your vibe and I like, this is the kind of, of gallery that I want to be a part of, is it as simple as reaching out to you? Like, what is the process for you to find these new artists, contemporary artists? Um, so, well, what we work off now is, you know, off the collection, mm-hmm. um, we're, that may change in the future because, you know, we do have a certain amount of artists within the collection. And, you know, also a part of an institution is you have to kind of stay relevant. And we've been super lucky that some of our shows have really coincided with, you know, current events, um, you know, artwork that was done, you know, a decade ago and is now becoming relevant again, which is right. just it's amazing to kind of see that happen. Um, But, you know, we do have artists that reach out to us and we pass along that information to to Mr. Brandt. Um, So um, sometimes it's a win and then other times, no. It is what it is. Yeah, absolutely. I just wanted to see if that, you know, because people out there might be wondering, you know, how, how can I become associated? But that, I mean, that kind of is the first step anyway, you yeah. know, it's work at the it end is. of the day. It's, it's not something that can, that is just handed to you. So, I mean, I, anyone who is an artist out there will fully understand that. Yeah. It's, it's crazy, honestly, when you see how sometimes it's just pure luck when you hear yes. these stories of artists who have made it. And it's almost like the chances of you coming into a well-branded gallery is almost like your chances of becoming a successful actor or singer. There's so much competition and it's just like, it's crazy. I I don't think I would want to be an artist. (laughs) It really is. is. No, it is. It's just like Um, anything else. And there's some times that I see uh, a work and I'm just like, wow, like, what makes, you know, maybe somebody else who's more established, like, I I feel like their work is so much better. It's so, it's so much more skillful, but at the end of the day, that's just my, you know, opinion. It's just like, you're really adhering to someone who has seen it all as, you know, an art dealer or a gallerist. So it's just, it's whatever really touches them in a way. And it's really crazy to just see how you know things start turning yeah it really is just like luck yeah 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 now do you um we know of the two spaces so do you guys ever um share or bounce exhibitions or exhibits rather like from location to location mm-hmm. or are they kind of like you know you have your thing going on and we have ours like we have our separate programming yeah so i mean really the the reason for the second space was just to um, really be able to accomplish our mission. You know, in Greenwich, we're also not on Greenwich Avenue. We're kind of off the beaten path. Um, And it's nice. It's like an escape, right? I always say I don't want to be in a bustling area. (laughs) Um, And, you know, the city, it's just, you could reach so many more people. Yeah. Um, And, you know, even that space, it's in the East Village, a lot of people once again walk by and they're like, what is this? And, um, 
there's one thing that, you know, when we're preparing for um, these locations, it Mr. Brandt really does want to keep that history uh, alive within the building. So, um, you know, both our landmarks, um, the first build or the building in the city was a uh, Con Edison substation. So, you know, we still have like the gantry from on, on the second floor where we pick up generators and move them and um, oh. yeah, and um, and then at one point it was also the studio and um, living quarters of Walter D. Maria. So you have this artist that used to live and work there, and yeah, so there's a lot of history <laughs> that's embedded in in our locations, which I think does make it um, unique. Mm -hmm. A little bit. I love that. That's that's part of the mission too. It's not yeah. just what you're showing; it's where you're showing it and showing respect for, you know, the history of your space, you know, yeah. it tells a story along with everything else. And it almost, as I'm saying it, probably um, enhances and adds to the story of the artist who's there, you know, yeah. of their works. And it it's like, if if the same exhibit were, let's say at the, at the Whitney, you know, just nothing wrong with the Whitney, versus at the Brandt Foundation, like, right. You, Experience the taken would be different. So I I just love that that respect for the the space is always held you know top yeah. of mind. And I think that like certain shows we wouldn't do here. Like for example, okay. Basquiat that was our first show in that building. Um, yeah, we could have done it in Greenwich, but I don't think it would have felt the same. Like we were showing we were opening up that space with an artist that was a part of that neighborhood he was an right. village artist he was you know um he was tagging in that area he was lit he was working in that area you know we often thought like did Basquiat walk by this building right so it was just like we were opening up an east village space with an east village artist and it just felt so right you know yeah. so um, we do think about um, that when we're when we're getting ready to, you know, planning a show, planning an exhibition. Right. Yeah. Love it. Oh yeah. my God, it's fascinating. This is like <laughs> my jammy jam. It makes me so happy. <laughs> yeah. um, so I guess like another thing that um, uh, that I'd love to know is how the community then right? That you're, I mean, you just said it's a, it's free, right? It's yeah. free to go to the brand foundation, um, and experience what they're offering. Um, your community outreach, like with the, you know, the summer programming, et cetera, with schools or with other organizations, like those relationships, if I understood it correctly, are also free. Yeah. Um, right. So how, um, can the community support you? You know, is there, do you guys hold fundraisers? Does the brand foundation rely on, on fundraising in order to stay afloat? Like how, how can the community be a service to you? So, um, what we, so we're a public, uh, we are privately funded. Um, but recently, um, you know, we have been looking into sponsorships for our exhibitions, like yeah. our first sponsored, um, show was Basquiat. It was sponsored by, um, well, that show traveled um, from Foundation Louis Vuitton to, to, the foundi uh, to our foundation. So um, we had funding from them. Saks uh, Fifth Avenue also helped sponsor. So it's something that we're looking to do because things are just getting very <laughs> Yes. And yeah. when you're dealing with that kind of caliber of work, um, you know, it, it costs a lot more than, than maybe something that is a little bit more local or of a different artist. Um, but really, uh, the best way would just be to come, you know, um, come to our, to our events. Like I said, our, we do yoga, um, our programs that gives money towards, um, you know, the kids, we, we buy all of the materials they do. They come here, they do a tour, followed by a project. So the materials and, you know, we're reaching out to different schools like Bridgeport, um, uh, Stanford. So sometimes in, in those types of areas, you know, these are title one schools and they don't have the funding for transportation. Um, and it's something that, you know, we want to reach everybody. So yeah. 
accessibility is a big yeah. deal. Yeah. Um, and if it's a part of our budget, we absolutely want to be able to provide that. So awesome. coming to yoga, um, coming to, we will also have, um, we'll sometimes do uh, sketch classes with a live model. I think we charge like 10 bucks for that just to cover the cost of like the model, um, you know, and I mean, it's, it's actually very cheap to, to, um, to sit as a, a live model. So most of the costs go towards, like I said, back to, to programming that we do, but we try to create these, these small experiences and um, that I don't think most people are getting for that cost or in that type of atmosphere. Like, yeah, I don't know. I would rather do yoga out on a nice green manicured lawn. <laughs> hundred percent. So you've mentioned the yoga class, for example, a few times. So are, are these classes like every Friday, you know, like at this time, like, is it always scheduled that way? Same thing yeah. with the sketch classes? It's every other, uh, so we had it every other Tuesday. Okay. We have a teacher that donates her time. She's great. Allison Roberts. Um, and you know, that's another reason why it's just like, all right, if more people come then she'll keep coming. <laughs> Um, Absolutely. I'll be, I think every other Thursday for the spring and summer. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Every other Thursday. Um, and same thing for the sketching um, classes that yeah, you're doing. I'll be up on our website. Um, I awesome. think we're getting ready to um, release programs for spring and summer on our website. We're still, Perfect. we literally just took down our show last week and it all happens very quickly. Like we take yeah. down in a week. Um, and then put up a show in like three weeks. <laughs> do you ever do any, like, let's say yoga or any other like community programming, or let's say inside the walls of the grand foundation oh, yeah. while, you're, while you're surrounded by the oh, yeah. art that's around you? You can't do yoga outside during the winter. So it happens. Right. Itself. So you're actually in this, you know, our double height gallery that once again, it's just like, you have these beautiful exposed wooden beams and natural elements. Yeah. Yeah. And same thing with the sketch. Sometimes we'll do it, um, you know, outside, like we've done, um, landscape painting classes, but most of the time it's done inside you can kind of roam wherever you'd like within the space, um, for, for the individual sketch night. So it's just like, and we do the same thing in the city. We were doing, um, meditation for a while. So we, we try to really just be here um, yeah. and be used, you know, any way that we can, like students need to come and they're like, I have to do an art project. You know, we're willing to like walk them through individually and, and take the time and, yeah. and explain it to them because, you know, first and foremost, we are an educational center. Yeah. And do you do you have to make like appointments or anything like that to go? Or can you just drop in and show up and be like, Hey, I want to walk around. So Saturday, uh, in the city, you could do that. Okay. Um, here in Connecticut, um, because we're actually located on a residential like property on Conyers farm. So that's why we have to do, um, a tour a day. Um, so that's Tuesday through Friday. You sign up for a tour, like I okay. said, three. and then Saturdays you could come anytime between 12 and 3 p.m. Okay, awesome. Yeah, we'll that. Sundays, yeah. Awesome. So as we wrap this up, like, is there, like, can you just tell everyone where they can find you, whether it's on social or, um, or on your website, like, is it one website for both locations, I would assume? One website for both locations. So the brand foundation is our Instagram handle. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook. Um, and yeah, we're, so we're closed right now because we're getting ready to install, but our new show will open May 10th to the public. Okay. And that will be uh, the works of uh, Spencer Sweeney. Beautiful. Awesome. Yeah. Well, so in a week, I think that's when we'll start um, announcing it on our website and, awesome. um, having like the tour dates listed and the programs. Yeah. So yeah, stay tuned. Awesome. Oh, I love this. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with, um, our viewers? Um, other than come, no, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Um, so one, one question that we always like to kind of wrap up 
our podcast with is, is there anything um, that you have read recently or in a book or, or something that has inspired you um, within this like your career so it could be like a book a movie a you know Honestly, person you've met <laughs> um the andy warhol documentary on netflix i think i'm i think i've started it a second time it is so beautiful yeah. um you know andy warhol is a big artist of, of you know of our collection um and everybody knows and loves him. And I just have to say, it's such um, a beautiful depiction of um, his life because he was so, uh, you know, his persona, this kind of aloof persona was a part of, you know, the artwork. You see artists do that, Jeff Koons, um, Salvador Dali. And it was just really interesting to like, see him in a completely different way. Like actually see, cause he's, he came off as so, you know, um, stoic and, you know, no emotion. And it's yeah. just, you really get to see him for who he was. And um, it's, it's really interesting. It's really That's interesting. beautiful. I never really thought about that, that artists could have like, or would have like, you know, like a, a singer would have a stage name, right? Or right something like that, like where it's just like they have a persona for their, you know, their star yeah. person, personality, right? But then behind closed doors, like with their friends, with their close, you know. Yeah, you see it like when we vibe, you know, when right? started, it was like all about this persona um, and, you know, uh, you the see the look, like everything. Scenes. Yeah, and artists do it too. And it's just, it's a part of their whole body of work, you know? Right. So, um, I would definitely recommend, uh, watching, uh, I think it's the Andy Warhol diaries. Yeah. Oh my God. I'm watching it tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. This is great. Great. Awesome. Well, thank you again so much for having me. Absolutely. Um, and yeah, I hope that, um, you know, you could reach out to any one of us, all of our, our contacts are listed on our website. And if anybody has any questions, feel free to contact me. Beautiful. Sabrina, thank you so much for your time. I had so much fun. This was it like literally, it put me in such a good mood for the rest of the day. <laughs> and I cannot yeah. wait. Yeah. And I cannot wait to come visit the Greenwich location. And I, I mean, I don't make it to New York that often. And you know, right now, but once I'm able to like, kind of get back in there, I will. Yeah. Of course. Um, thank you so much guys right. out there. Please check them out. We we're going to be posting all their contact information everywhere. So cool. follow them, please, um, at the Brand Foundation um, and keep up with everything that they're um, offering the community. I mean, it's something that we enjoy, you know, from Fairfield, Connecticut, like we're covering all of Fairfield County. So this is definitely something that's not to be missed um, because it's just an absolutely beautiful experience from what I can just tell from a website. I cannot wait to see what it's like in person. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Sabrina. All right. Take care.